Bitcoin is flipping every major level into resistance. We have confirmations of major signs of weakness. In this video, I'm going to be preparing you and getting you ready for a massive move to the downside. If you are not prepared for this, you are lining yourself up to be wrecked. So please listen carefully and closely as I prepare you for these scenarios. You know, price, honestly, it really can be dropping to $40,000 zone. I see a lot of people saying that's not possible. That's not going to be happening. Well, <laughs> it can happen. And if you are not prepared for such levels, well, the only answer is you will end up being wrecked. So I want to prepare you for those bearish scenarios, get you ready uh, for what's going to be looking forward in terms of the next high probability trade setups. That's what we're all about here. We're not perma bulls. We're not perma bears. We just want to trade the charts, get in, get out, make some profits, move on to that next trade. So let me go over the charts, explain first of all, what is the latest major sign of weakness that we have seen leading to this drop to the downside and how I am trading and looking for next. So let's go into it really simply. Uh, let's start the analysis. So first of all, uh, the last major sign of weakness that we actually saw confirmed on Monday. And that was really simply put the retest of the value area low. Remember how over the past month we had been trading very closely these value areas. If you've been following along the past few weeks, you would know. Uh, really simply, you can see how price action had went, right? We had the value area high test. We moved back down to the value uh, point of control. Then we had the secondary retest of the point of control, retest of the value area high retest of the point of control and this is the important part point of control flipping to support lost with candle closes and then we can see how that flips to resistance so you flip range point of control from support lost flip to resistance why is that so important because it's exactly what happened on monday when we flip the range value area low from support candle closes below flipped into resistance okay so Looking at it now, this was very simple, very obvious, right? But I will say, when you're looking at this, not from Monday's perspective, but looking at it like this, this is a difficult short uh, from a swing trader's perspective. Why? Because you're going off of a lack of confluence to just place a limit order at value area low. Very difficult trade setup. You really have to wait for the intraday setup. We're very much aware that value area low is resistance, but to just place the limit order, you're looking at a very large stop loss. Um, you know, it's just a, yeah, no, let's be honest, it's not the best trade setup. What you're going to need to do is wait for the intraday setup at that level of zone. And you actually were granted the most perfect intraday setup off of that zone. So what was it? Let's zoom into a lower term time frame. Okay, this was the price action that you had up here around 63,500 at that value area low. And you were granted the intraday setup of an internal range with a swing failure pattern. Really, really, really nice that Bitcoin <laughs> is finally moving back into its old ways. Really simple swing failure pattern of the range high granted a short trade entry. You have this internal range to be trading down here with the range low up to then what would have been the range high swing failure pattern of the range low up to the high for the swing failure pattern and then we move our way back down to the range low to give us one more reactive move for that partial rise ending with another lower high and breakdown and then what happened from this area of support we flipped it into resistance on this move to the upside at this point you have then had major sign of weakness confirmations the value area low retest on a high term time frame lower term time frame perspective entry for the short bringing it back down to range low which was lost retested at this point you have higher term time frame uh, levels being flipped from support to resistance lower term time frame confirmation of weakness losing that internal range well what is your thought process then you have to be understanding that lower is the highest probability i want to share with you a quick post from my daily morning updates that i do for the champions members and that was at this point I was looking, of course, we had just formed that internal SFB, lower high continuation to the downside. That is how it played out. Why was this? I told my team very clearly, my want, my personal perspective of what I would like to happen next is to see price drop 
down through support to take out at least $61,000. Why was that? Well, at this point, I recognize we have some major levels down here. I really want to see it tested. I want to see these levels tested. This is major liquidity. Uh, we've just seen the value area low, which was an important level for me, flip to resistance with the SFP. We have come up to a point that really simply I felt the highest probability uh, of what I wanted to see next was lower prices to come. Okay, so it was as simple as that. I felt lower prices next was the highest probability. And we can see how that kind of played out yesterday around 4 p.m. UK time. We were making our way down. I was telling my team still would like to see lower prices to come on Bitcoin. And we did get that right this morning waking up. We wanted to see $61,000 taken out. We got $61,000 taken out, you know, a few days later. Just had to remain patient for that. And here we go. At this point, I tell my team really simply, we're either going to get the monthly naked point of control reclaim or lower to 60,200 um, naked point of control. Let me just show you how that played out because the flips that we saw here were really, really nice indeed. So let's go down to the five minute time frame. What we done in the end was really simply, again, we wanted to see 61K taken out. 61K gets taken out. At that point, you get the monthly NPOC reclaim. And if that doesn't happen, we simply got to look for lower prices. Okay, if unable to reclaim, we look for lower. We trade the charts. What happens? We see that monthly NPOC retested and continuation once more to the downside to hit that naked point of control. And what we're looking at now Okay, I want to show you this off the CME chart. I'm really hoping you're following along here because building up this context is so important. It's really important that you pay attention. A lot, a lot of people just want to skip to the end of the video where I'll give my outlook. But understanding this piece of context is truly important because I'm really trying at my best here to educate you what went on. You know, these are repeating patterns that happen again and again and again. And it's through this, uh, you know, absorption of the information and knowledge that I'm sharing that you can really start to you know, do these own predictions yourself and recognize what you want to see, how you would think the charts are lining up in terms of probabilities. Okay. So it's the same theory that we're using over and over again, right? And so uh, really simply, yeah, we made our way down. And what is important is the CME gaps. Okay. So this is on the CME chart. Uh, if you're not, if you've not got this loaded up, it's BTC one exclamation mark. Of course, we have this CME gap, which is now filled. But what we have actually slightly front run is a lower CME gap. So this is something to be aware of, right? So this is where we can be looking for another move to the downside here on Bitcoin to fill this CME gap, okay? To fill this gap here. I will zoom in so you can see it. Okay, we have this lower CME gap. The low of that coming at $59,470. Okay, of course, that first CME gap filled, but the lower one absolutely not filled yet. As you can see, partial fill. Uh, so we can be looking absolutely for locally lower to come as well. Okay, so we have a few different factors. Locally, the lower CME gap drop to fill that CME gap. And of course, on the higher term time frame, we're also seeing major levels of major signs of weakness, let's say. And again, I want to emphasize the biggest one that we've seen recently, and that is that value area low retest into resistance for this uh, subsequent drop to the downside. So we can start to make it very simple, right? First of all, as I said to my group this morning, if we cannot reclaim this monthly, well, we were looking to 60,200 MPOC. That's where we're trading at now. We're pretty much trading on that naked point of control. So now we can focus in on the CME gap, that lower CME gap. I've obviously already told my team about this a few hours ago, but that's what we're going to be looking at next is the lower CME gap, right? And the fill of that. If we can find support here and reclaim the monthly that will give us a lower term time frame market structure change and a local sign of strength and that would be the first first glimpse of strength that we've seen here okay so really simply we would like to see for higher continuation the monthly npoc obviously now tapped but reclaimed as support why because that will give us this nice market structure change of this local range that we can be trading okay so what we can be looking at locally for a new trade setup would be let's say move to the downside take out this low that would also fill that low lower cme gap right for then the reclaim to trade that range till it breaks and instead of sfp to high you actually look for a reclaim of that and that's where we can get that local sign of strength OK, so you can start to see how the brain is working here of how we can see uh, activation for new 
long trade entries, how we can see activation for a short trade entry if we get a swing failure pattern of this local range high. And if we get that reclaim, how we'll be looking for continuation then to the upside. Okay, I'm preparing myself for longs. I'm preparing myself for shorts. I'm just trying to get in at good levels, areas of interest. But undeniably, yes, the higher term time frame right now is looking more bearish than it is bullish. Okay, so I, I would say I have more of a bearish bias. That doesn't mean that I'm only taking short trades. I'm even in a long trade right now, actually. Uh, this was a, a quicker sculpt trade currently in around $6,000 of profit. But, you know, these are just quick trades that I'm looking to get in, looking to get out. So I would say, yeah, um, what something that's really important is that when I say like I have a bearish bias, I am expecting lower. Doesn't mean that I'm only going to take shorts. Doesn't mean I'm scared to take longs. No, I'm looking to just come into these markets, you know, try and get to like I got here, like a nice sniper entry and looking to bring this. Ultimately, I would like to get a swing trade here. Hasn't worked out as of yet. I've took a few winners. I've took a few losses. Uh, of course, the last video that I made, I was in the long trade, got out of that in the end with only $3,000 of profit, only 3000 dollars of profit but nevertheless still three thousand dollars is three thousand dollars right can't complain too much but you can see my last few trades here uh, one thousand two hundred dollars of profit then i took two thousand five hundred loss and then yeah again on that last trade three thousand dollars of profit this one i was looking really to get out of between 64 65 but this is the thing right we saw that swing failure pattern we saw the downtrend and well of course that trade in the end was invalidated and you know managed to get out with it with a little bit of profit so now this is my next trade setup of course i would like to take it into a swing trade but i understand that is not going to happen unless we can get that monthly reclaim at the very least at the very least okay uh because if that's not the case well i'll be looking for another move to the downside of course take a take a small hit on this trade and i'll look for the swing fellow pattern of the cme gap fill for my next trade uh but if we can get that monthly reclaim first, well, then I guess what? I have another uh, potential swing trade entry here. And that's kind of the style that I'm going for uh, with this uh, trade at the moment. You know, a little bit of a day trade sculpt that can have the potential of a swing trade. Okay, on the local turn time frame. OK, what we've seen over the past few days, just as we have the local range here, we can also pull this as a bigger range. Right. So you can see the importance of that monthly point of control flip, because then we're also flipping this local more range into support. So, <laughs> well, I hope I haven't lost too many of you here. I know sometimes I can go at start to get a little bit complex, but I do try and keep this analysis uh, that I present to people simple. OK, I try and do the hard work, the calculations, and then just present it in a way that's, you know, relatively easy easy to understand okay you can get into my brain you can get into the thought process you know i'm being transparent with my trades i'm showing you all my trades the history what i'm going through you know uh, you know they're not taking 100 percent win rate we've got a loss in here we got two winners in here currently then another trade that i'm in right now you know looking six thousand eight hundred dollars of profit but you have to understand uh, ultimately, I have prepared you for those lower prices. Okay, I guess I haven't gone into it in too much detail. I ended up focusing too much on the lower term time frame. Really simply, that would be an overall range loss of support, right? And that, I mean, it's just sign of weakness, sign of weakness, sign of weakness, sign of weakness, sign of weakness across the board on every time time frame you'd be looking at at that point. If you are denying forty thousand dollars, then. Uh, you, you are denying every single sign of weakness that you would have as clear evidence fact on the chart. So, you know, this is where things can get absolutely bearish very quickly. More locally, um, yeah, it's, uh, you know, obviously more locally, it's also bearish, but it's one of these ones that do I think we can go 40K? Yes. But am I going to be shorting that local support? No. You know, I'm, I'm going to still be looking for longs at support. I understand that I need to get out of this as if there's a bit of weakness. I understand I would also like to short if we get a bit of a rise next. OK, so, you know, that I just think it's so important that people understand that it's very, very, very important. OK, the most important thing in this game is making profits. OK, it's not necessarily about being right or wrong. OK, you can be wrong on a trade idea. Like I would ultimately say I was wrong on my last trade idea. I wanted to see, you know, at least 64K tested. But I recognized where I was going to be wrong. OK, and at least I made a little bit of profit on that trade, right? $3,000. If I was correct, well, I could have made, been making a lot more, right? But I was wrong on the idea, but I still made $3,000 of profit. So, you know, that, that's the importance in this market, getting in, getting out, taking a few scratches. You know, we're never going to have a 100% win rate. It's unrealistic. It's not, uh, you know, long term going to be the case. 
although I still am on 100% win rate on my conservative trading account. But nevertheless, uh, it's not realistic in the long term. We got to come in here. We got to um, you know look for these entries. And uh, this is the tactic I'm going for. If you can get a nice scalp trade entry, turn it into a bit of a day trade, turn it into then a swing trade. That's what I'm looking for here on this on this account. Okay. Uh, could this end in one? Mm, I must admit, locally I would like to see this rise only to take a short trade. Um, but then the next trade, yeah, I'll be looking for that CME gap fill. And if we do not get that, then I will be looking overall, of course, for the range low, uh, more towards, to be honest with you, uh, $54,000. So, uh, yeah, that's kind of my game plan. That's what we're looking at. That's the signs of strength uh, that we would have to see locally and the signs of weakness that we've seen on more of a higher term time frame. Okay, so, um, yeah, I hope that has made sense to you. The local... Um, Oh man, I got, got so much to go over here. Yeah, obviously, the sign of strength three test of that point of control, how locally you had that as a setup of a swing failure pattern. So it was an intraday setup that obviously gave the downtrend to the move. Um, but yeah, I think that's everything that I wanted to cover here. Uh, of course, if you want to see more from myself and the other coaches, you can get that via chartchampions.com. Uh, that's where we give our daily updates. That's where we give our opinions in the charts, explaining why we want to see lower to come on Bitcoin, what we feel is the highest probability, and you know giving our trade ideas okay keeping you up to date in the moment of you know what we're really expecting next so if you want that uh in terms of the daily updates daily live streams live trading streams if you want to see when these trades are entered the reason why okay everything to do with live trading and of course the educational library on top of it everything is for you at chartchampions.com we really try and keep this very professional and just a service aimed to help you improve your trading I guess as simple as that. If you want that, chartchampions.com. Thank you ever so much. I truly hope you've enjoyed this one. And um, yeah, I hope you understand and can recognize now these signs of weakness and how you do have to be prepared for that major drop to the downside next. But that doesn't mean only take shorts. Okay, thank you ever so much. Hope you've enjoyed. And that is me signing out now. Cheers, everybody. And good one. <laughs> have a good one. Goodbye. <laughs>